the most enjoyable part about the VMAX, as far as I'm concerned, is that initial takeoff, that rush, that torque, that pull. Hello everyone, you are looking at my 2020 Yamaha VMAX that I have now owned for five months. So I decided that I would do this review to give you some general information about the VMAX and to let you in on some things that I have noticed with my experience over the past five months since riding it. First, what everybody knows about the VMAX is how huge this thing is. It's a very large bike and it weighs 683 pounds wet. It's also a very long bike uh, coming in at 66.9 inches as far as the wheelbase is concerned. So we may as well just say it has a 67 inch wheelbase. Now the real heart and soul of this bike is its V4 liquid cooled engine. So let's just walk around and take a look at that. 1679 cc's. It has 197 horsepower at the crank and 174 horsepower at the rear wheel. It has a massive amount of torque and it will throw you off the seat if you are not careful and if you are not hanging on. So you need to know what you are doing before you go cranking hard on that throttle. But at the same time, that's the most enjoyable part of the motorcycle. It has great pull during roll-ons at any speed, as you can see here. All right, we are in fifth gear at 70 miles an hour. I'm going to do some roll-ons. Went to wide open throttle. You can see how fast that gets up to speed. So here's 60 again in full wide open throttle in fifth gear. That does not take long at all. 65, I'll drop it down to fourth this time. Much quicker and forth obviously but there is no lack of power on this motorcycle but I think most everybody knows that anyway and for those that think that this thing needs a sixth gear uh, I just want to show you I want to get down to about 60 miles an hour real quick because I think that's a standard that a lot of uh, tests are run at and just show you the rpms at 60 uh, 60 miles an hour the rpm appears to be around 3300 give or take and according to Yamaha the fifth gear on this is considered an overdrive just because of the ratio and really that's the that's the thing that matters it's not how many gears it has it's really what the uh, ratio is of that top gear for its size it is a very smooth feeling engine uh, you really don't feel that much vibration as much as you would think you would uh, by the deep sound that it has and as much horsepower as it has uh, but you really don't feel it in the seat or in the in your feet you know a little vibration in your hands but that's normal now driving all of that power to the rear wheel is on that massive shaft drive it is very smooth and maintenance free and by smooth i mean there is no backlash and at the same time i do not feel any rear jacking uh, that a lot of people uh, claim that this bike has, but I'm not sure if they've ever ridden it. And I think that the, the jacking effect uh, is probably getting some undue criticism uh, because people were just so used to saying that shaft drives tend to jack the rear and it's just something that they've repeated over the years without ever actually experiencing it. So I think it's just a stigma that's ha that has lingered on for many decades. The gear oil only needs to be changed every 16,000 miles or 24 months. So let's move to the front of the bike because I did say that this is a V4 liquid cooled and the liquid is actually cooled by these two radiators and they each have a fan. But I have only heard the fans come on when I am basically just idling and sitting in traffic. So let's move around to the front of the bike. You can see there is the headlight. The headlights may be a little bit deceiving. You may look at this and think, okay, one is high beam, one's low beam, or vice versa, but that's not the case. Both high and low beam are right there coming out of this lens, 
and that is actually just an auxiliary light. The auxiliary light is 5 watts, low beam is 55 watt, high beam is 60 watt. The most distinguishing feature to me on the front of the bike are the intakes, those air scoops. And I will try and get a close up on these. So I will say that these air scoops are functional, unlike the original VMAX. All right, let's talk about the brakes for a moment while we're up here. One of the things I want to mention, you know, you see here we have dual disc brakes, but you'll often see or read that it has Brembo brakes. This does not have Brembo brakes. What it has is a Brembo master cylinder, and I will try and show you that. I don't know if I can get a close-up. If not, I'll provide one. But you can see the B right there for Brembo. There's their logo. But it's only the master cylinder which is uh, made by Brembo on this bike. And here's the rear brake. And I will show you right here. When you see this stuff right here, you know you are dealing with ABS. And the front has them as well. And there it is, the monitoring for ABS. Now, one of the things that I do want to mention as far as the brakes are concerned, they do have ABS, but the brakes are not linked. So I know that's kind of new now with uh, motorcycles that the brakes are actually linked together. And for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, on motorcycles that have linked brakes, each brake control controls both the front and the rear. So that is not the case on uh, the VMAX. So this one is still old school. All right, back up here on the suspension, I'll only just briefly mention that um, the front suspension has a total of three adjustments that you can make, and the rear has three adjustments that you can make as well. You can adjust preload, rebound, and compression. And I'm not gonna go get go too deep into all of that because I've got a video just on that. Uh, but I can tell you that I have my preloads on both the front and the rear set to the softest setting uh, just because of how light I am. And I also have all other settings at normal. And it's to me, it's a very comfortable ride. Um, I have no issues with the suspension. I guess you'd have to ride other bikes to find out how nimble you think this is compared to those. But I have no problem avoiding obstacles in the road. But clearly it's not going to be as nimble as a sport bike or something with a much shorter wheelbase. Again, I think a lot of people forget that this is a cruiser. The fact that it can go fast confuses people. You're looking at a side panel here. I'm not going to get into that, uh, but each side has removable side panels. I have a video on that, on how to remove those and what's underneath each one. To me, this is uh, the most distinguishing feature in the rear, at the rear of the motorcycle, are the exhaust tubes. Having four exhaust pipes coming out uh, is something that you just don't see very often. And as far as the exhaust is concerned, the exhaust pipes coming from the engine are four into one into two into four so the four into one they're actually going into the catalytic converter and then out of the catalytic converter they split into two coming out of uh, one coming out of each side of the bike and then from there they split again into four so i like the sound of the system the way it is stock uh, there's no way that i would change it all right so speaking of exhaust let's just fire this thing up so we can hear what it sounds like As you can see, it's loud enough to know that you're dealing with a V4, but it's not obnoxiously loud. As a matter of fact, let's just measure how loud it is. This is at idle. I'm standing about two feet away from the exhaust, and as you can see, it's right around 86, 87. The reason why I'm doing this is just to let you know how loud it would be for neighbors. Crank the throttle a little bit and see what that does as far as the uh, decibel reading. All right, moving around to other features of the motorcycle. It is not the gas tank, that is merely a top cover. Uh, the battery is actually under here, but the fuel tank is not. The fuel tank is actually under the seat. You get to that by hitting this lever, opening the seat up, and then you use your key to fill the tank. I'll go over the instrumentation right now. I will turn this on, the display, the instrument panel, 
This is, this is considered an OLED, organic electroluminescence display. And I've got a video on the functions and operations, so there's no need for me to really go over all of that. Up here we have the tachometer, which is analog, and we also have the speedometer, which is LCD, and we also have a shift light. And the shift light is pretty cool. I use that. I've got it set at 9,000 RPMs, which is just short of the red line at 9,500. You can set the shift light to uh, come on at different RPMs uh, by individual gear or set them all at the same. So I have all of mine set at the same at 9,000. So it's a blast. Um, now, as far as the LCD, I know a lot of people don't like LCD because sometimes they're hard to read. I haven't had an issue with this one, even on uh, sunny days when um, you know you think the glare would cause an issue or, or the LCD to kind of fade out. The LCD itself holds up fine. You just get glare off of the, the glass or the plastic, whatever this is, um, which is normal on, on any bike. But the LCD is always fine and easy to read, so I've never had an issue with that. You will notice that the ABS light is on, but it will go out once I hit six miles per hour because it is running a self-diagnostic test. These are the two controls to control the instrument panel. Again, I'm not going to get into that because I have another video on it. All right, so let's take a look at the controls. Over here, the right hand, simple enough, on-off switch and the start button. On the left side, again, just simple enough. High beam, low beam, the flasher, uh, the turn signal. The one thing I do not like about the turn signals is they do not have uh, self-canceling. So you have to remember to turn them off every time. I just think that at this day and age, all street bikes should have self-canceling turn signals. I don't know how much more it would take to put them in there. It can't be much more. As far as weight, that has to be a non-issue. It would be electronic, can't be more than a few ounces. As far as cost, that can't be more than a few dollars. And even at this price, at $18,000, if they needed to charge another 100 bucks to put that in there, fine, charge me another $100. That, that amount is insignificant when you get that high. So uh, it just doesn't make any sense. And the only other control over here is the horn. So one of the things that you will not find on this bike, uh, well, there's no cruise control and there is no traction control. So uh, you're not going to find anything like that on this bike. So your traction control is all right here. It's in the right hand. You control it. This is old school. If you are not used to a high powered machine and you jump on this thing and just go wide open throttle, uh, you're probably gonna get yourself in a lot of trouble in a hurry. All right, let's uh, get back off of the bike and go over a few other things. Just want to talk about the rear tire. Uh, the tires in general, I haven't had any issues with as far as traction is concerned. They seem to grab well at, uh, at all speeds and all angles. This uh, rear tire is a Bridgestone Battle Axe and the size is 200 slash 50 and it's on an 18 inch rim. So let's move on up to the front. The front tire is also Bridgestone Battle Axe and it's a 120 slash 70 and it is also on an 18 inch rim. The only thing I haven't shown you at this point is the tail light, it's LED. All right, one thing you will notice here is that it does have the passenger backrest. For those of you that have seen my other video, you know that I installed this, but that this uh, does not come with the motorcycle. I'll show you a picture here on what it looks like um, without the backrest. As far as modifications are concerned, that's the only modification that I have done. Overall, I can tell you I'm very happy with this bike. Um, it's a VMAX. I knew exactly what I was getting. And at the same time, I knew exactly what I was getting into. So I think the reason why this bike scares a lot of people is because they don't know exactly what they're getting into. They're not used to the power uh, that a bike of uh, this size and uh, this type is capable of doing. So it scares them and they often get rid of it or sell it or whatever. So, but I knew exactly what I was getting into. I was used to a powerful V4. I can handle it quite well despite my size. So if a lot of you out there are wondering um, if this bike would fit you or not, um, you can just look at me as an example. Like I said, I'm only five foot six, 130 pounds. It's been a blast in the five months that I've had it. I have no real issues with the bike. 
It's handled well. I think it's a very comfortable ride. It's definitely a powerful ride. I have fun every time I take it out. The most enjoyable part about the VMAX, as far as I'm concerned, is that initial takeoff, that rush, that torque, that pull. I think that's the lure of motorcycles as a whole. It's also part of the lure of this bike as well. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share with others. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. See you next time.